Hey, hey guys, this is actually insight number one. The, oh no, it's on a Tuesday, but I've done three this week. Um, and I did a, like a prequel on Monday. So you'll get the prequel and then three insights. So technically four, but this is actually number one. So Peter walks on water. Pretty cool, right? So this is in Matthew 14, 20, 22 to 33, but it is mentioned in, the incident is mentioned in each of this week's readings. Um, I just picked one for Matthew because it, talked more around what I wanted to focus on um so we've got this beautiful picture from the come follow me manual this one this is the Liz Lemon swindle very nice um I, ve I really like the the kindness that she's managed to paint in here and the um the absolute desperation and gladness and joy and relief that you see here in Peter um, of course, you know, what did it actually look like? Well, we have really no idea, do we? But it's a pretty good interpretation. I do particularly like Yong Song Kim's, um, I'll probably post that as well uh, around this, his depiction of this, just and that's how I always kind of feel in uh, Jesus' face there is more sense to me the way he has just the joy and it's like, of course I'll catch you, of course I'll like rescue you. Like it just, yeah, to me that's, you know, and it's, it, you don't see Peter in that one. He's just literally reaching out to whoever's drowning. So I really like that too. Anyway, so this is in verses 22 to 33. So after feeding the 5,000 plus, um, Jesus sent his disciples before him while he goes and have this moment because, you know, like he's just created this, just done all this teaching and, and had this big miracle. It's exhausting. He's physically tired. Needs one of those lovely meditative moments that his mum taught him to take and probably Heavenly Father taught him to take and that he's learnt is really good for him. So it's, you know, again, if you're sitting here thinking, I'm really stressed and I need the break, well, Jesus took them regularly, so you can too. Um, so it says hours later in the fourth watch, which is about 3 to 6 a.m., and you can see that by the footnote. It's no deep research to find that out. Um, they had only rode a short way in the storm. So let's just have a look at this. So in 22, it says, Straightway Jesus constrained his disciples to get into a ship and sent them to the other side. So he sent them on ahead. Um, and it's like, he went off to pray. And in 24, the ship was now in the midst of the sea, tossed with waves, for the wind was contrary. And you're like, what does that mean? It means against. So they're working against a big force. They didn't even raise the sails. They were rowing. And then, remember, these guys are fishermen, and nine of them lived around Galilee, six were fishermen, so they knew what they were doing, and it was still, again, one of those storms that comes up on the sea there, um, and they were working really hard against it to get to the other side, because you can't just, like, go to sleep in a boat, you'll get washed, goodness knows where. So, they were, you know, they were there. So, in the fourth watch, Jesus went to them walking on the sea. So, kind of like, to us, no big surprise, because we know Jesus can work miracles. To them, it was. They'd not seen this before. This was new. Um, so, they saw this, and they were like, oh, my gosh, is that a ghost? Is it a spirit? Something's coming to get us. What is that? And Jesus heard this, and in verse 27, he says, but straightway, Jesus spake unto them, saying, be of good cheer, and be not afraid. So, this is where the stretch of faith comes in, and they have that stretch of faith. And they're like, okay, we can do that. Um, and Pete said, Peter answered unto him, he's stretching faith here, Lord, if it be thou, if it's thy will, right, bid me come unto thee on the water. Like, I want to try this. This looks amazing. Let's give this a go. Like, good on Peter, right? He's like confident in this. He's like, well, I trust you, Lord. I, 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 Jesus, I trust you. If you can do this and you say I can, then I can. Um, now, do we stretch our faith like that? Sometimes, sometimes we do. Most often, we're a bit too timid, so, yeah. Lord says you can do it. You can do it. It's hard, but you can do it. Yeah. <laughs> I know, right? I know what you're all thinking, and I'm thinking it too. I'm thinking, ah. Oh. And he might not ask us to walk on water, but he asks us to do some other things. And it's our faith to know in that relationship with him that if he says you can do this, he'll make it so. Um, yeah, so... Put your best in, because you can. Um, anyway, in verse 29, uh, Jesus says to him, Come. So when Peter came out of the ship, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. He succeeded in this. So much is focused on the sinking moment. But he actually walked on water. How freaking cool is that? Would you like to try that? I would love to try that. I'm not about to try that, but I would love to. I think if Jesus was holding my hand and says, You can do this, I, I would... I'd like to say I'd trust him. I, I still, I don't know, my humanity's holding me back there. 
Um, but when, when he saw the wind boisterous and he was afraid and beginning to sink, he cried, Lord, save me. So that's the doubt moment that comes in. But immediately you see there in verse 31, immediately, without hesitation and immediately. Not a whole, well, you doubted, here's your consequence. You now get to be in the waves a bit and then I'll come get you. No, immediately. Jesus stretched forth his hand and caught him and said unto him, O thou of little faith, wherefore didst thou doubt? But he's not doing it in a, like a horrible way. He's not like saying to him, rah, 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 rah. No, he's like, oh, Peter, you had it. You were doing it, mate. You, were, you had it. How come you doubted? But that's okay, because I've got you. And that's the grace. That's where grace enters in. Uh, and then when he calms the storm. And note here too, he calms the storm after the fact. So now they're all in the boat and all safe. And then he calms the storm. Again, teaching them we need to continue living and that miracles happen even in the midst of the storm. Like actually, mostly in the midst of the storm. Hardly ever when it's calm. Right, um, but then they like in thirty three when they were that were in the ship came and worshipped him saying, "Of a truth thou art the son of God." As if they didn't already know, they knew, but this just really strengthened their testimonies. Um, so yeah, getting through storms in miraculous ways, learning Jesus in the storms really, and it's like you know the the come by me manual asks, "What is your greatest fear?" And I'm like, you know, my greatest fear, and I said this to my husband because I don't have children. My greatest fear is that in the coming years, there'll be no one to look after me when I need that help that you would normally rely on your children for, that I don't have that. And because my husband's older than me, like 20 years older than me, I might not have him either. And that's frightening for me. And yet I know the Lord's going to look after me because he always has. But that is a fear of mine. It is my greatest fear. I don't fear the dying part, I just fear the continuing living part, um, which to a lot of people would be odd because they'd fear the dying. I don't fear the dying, I, I like bring it on like whenever, right? And people think, oh, that's scary and you shouldn't say that. And I was like, yeah, but I know where I'm going and I know it's going to be good um, and I won't be in pain anymore. And like, there's, there's so many good things to me about that, but there's also so many good things here right now as well. So you know, I'm good with that, but I just worry about the continuing living part, the getting sicker and not having the care. That's what I worry about. It's probably my greatest worry, my greatest fear. Um, but my greatest hope, definitely Jesus Christ. And that was the case in these, um, in this as well. So Jesus walked out to them. They realized it was him. Peter, full of faith, asked courage to come out. But then he doubted after he actually walked on water amazing um but then he doubted but immediately was saved so yeah what is your greatest fear and what is your greatest hope so my greatest fear is the continuing living as i said but my greatest hope is jesus christ and knowing that whatever happens in this life is, is for such a short time even though it seems forever sometimes it just goes so quickly and in the moment that you're in the pain it can seem to last a long long time and you're like you're in the pain and you know especially when I've been in the ambulance and I'm like get there already get there and they're like it's only been five minutes and I'm like it feels like it's been like hours you know and you're waiting for something like that oh it's time we can move so slowly it's the weirdest thing really and yet sometimes months go by and you're like where did that go don't know right so but my greatest hope is there but we all have days of success and doubt and grace just like Peter did there. He had success, he had doubt, and then he had grace. He actually did it, and he doubted himself immediately. And a lot of people will say, oh, but he doubted, like, right after the success? And I'm like, yeah, but that's usually how it happens. Because you think, how can I be successful at this? And the focus moved from Christ to the water. The focus moved to the things around him, the external factors. The focus moved from Christ, and that's where the doubt came in. So our daily goal is to have that focus on Christ. And that's that's the point here of most value, I think, is the focus on Christ and to keep that going so that you don't start sinking. Um, but... Sherry Jew, she said, all is well when our most compelling focus is following Jesus Christ. So if that is our compelling focus, then 
it will be well, just like it was here. So I hope that uplifts you on that. Enjoy that. Um, no great and deep meaningfuls there, just some really basic reminders to focus on Christ and to not be distracted by the water and the wind and the turmoil of what's going on around us. Focus on Christ. Like, those things exist there, but focus on Christ. All right, hang around. We're going to hop over to John and see what he's got to say about all this. I'll see you there.